Welcome back, everyone. Today's episode of Duty and Valor came to us from a listener. I was contacted on our YouTube channel by Nate, who suggested looking into the heroes that give Pueblo, Colorado its moniker, the home of heroes. I had never heard of these men, but after reading more about them, I decided to tell you one of their stories this week. And just a reminder, if there is a story you would like me to feature on the show, you can reach out to me on any social media platform, including YouTube, or you can contact me through our website, dutyandvalor.com. Today you'll hear the story of a man who was recognized for valor on numerous occasions during his time in the Marine Corps. A man whose battlefield decisions would ensure his outnumbered men would achieve their objective and send the enemy running. A man who defied orders to lead a stalled attack on the enemy and then lead his men in a rescue mission to ensure no Marine was left behind. This is the story of Medal of Honor recipient U.S. Marine Corps Captain Raymond Murphy. Raymond Gerald Murphy, who would go by Jerry, was born on January 14, 1930 to parents Thomas and Mae Murphy of Pueblo, Colorado. After graduating from Pueblo Catholic High School in 1947, he attended Fort Lewis Junior College before transferring to Adams State College, where along with being a swimming instructor, he played varsity football, basketball, and baseball. He graduated Adams State College in 1951 and joined the Marine Corps Reserve in May of that year. After attending Officers Candidate School in Paris Island, South Carolina, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in September. After graduating the course, he received advanced training at Camp Pendleton in California before finding himself in Korea in July 1952 as an officer of the 1st Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, 1st Marine Division. On November 22, Jerry was the platoon commander of Company A when he was given orders to assault the enemy line. Although he and his men were facing a determined enemy who were defending their position with rifle, mortar, and artillery fire, Jerry exposed himself countless times to lead his men forward to their objective. On three occasions, the enemy appeared to have stopped the American assault, but each time, Lieutenant Murphy was able to make tactical adjustments, which led the enemy to falling back. His unit suffered heavy casualties, but they were able to secure their objective. Lieutenant Murphy then turned his focus to evacuating the injured Marines. They were still under heavy enemy fire, but he remained behind until he was sure that everyone had withdrawn. For his leadership and valor in combat that day, he was awarded the Silver Star. On February 3rd, 1953, Second Lieutenant Murphy was with his platoon near their base in Ungok, South Korea, when they found themselves supporting an assault on the enemy. Two Marine companies were assaulting a determined enemy with air and tank support. In anticipation of casualties from the assault, his platoon was held in reserve to support medical evacuations. After an hour, Lieutenant Murphy knew something was wrong when no Marines returned with injured men. With such heavy fighting, they were expecting some casualties by this point. He defied a direct order and led his men up the hill to assess the situation. When he made contact with the attacking Marines, he saw immediately that the assault had stalled. Most of the senior officers and non-commissioned officers had been killed, so he took command of the assault himself. Though the enemy was concealed and well entrenched, he was able to lead the Marines in an attack. He and his platoon faced mortar and small arms fire, but they were able to redirect the fight to allow fellow Marines who had been pinned down to rejoin the fight. He was able to direct evacuation teams to injured men, and Lieutenant Murphy himself made numerous runs through heavy fire to carry wounded Marines to safety. An AMVETS magazine article from 2003 quoted that a sergeant who saw firsthand Lieutenant Murphy's heroics said, It was impossible to know how many trips he made under heavy enemy fire to pull guys to safety. When he was back in the fighting, a mortar landed nearby and its explosion sent shrapnel into his left side. Though badly injured, he continued to lead the attack. One of the attacking platoons requested reinforcements, so Murphy led his men to support them. He and his men engaged the enemy, and Lieutenant Murphy killed two men with his pistol during the assault. Though they were making progress up the hill, Lieutenant Murphy was commanded by his battalion commander to cease the attack and withdraw. Complying this time, he covered his men and they pulled back in an orderly withdrawal. 
living by the ethos that no man is left behind. Lieutenant Murphy took a few men and swept the area to ensure all Marines had been accounted for. During their sweep, they were able to find the bodies of a machine gun crew who had been killed in the fighting and carried them back down the hill. Shortly after, the enemy advanced on the Marines as they withdrew and took up positions in the recently cleared bunkers. With only a few Marines able to stop the enemy's advance, Lieutenant Murphy picked up an automatic rifle and fought back even though he was badly injured and in a lot of pain. Once able to, he withdrew with the last of the Marines. On his way back, Lieutenant Murphy saw a stretcher on the ground with an injured Marine, so he decided to stop and help. He bent over to help lift one end of the stretcher when his right hand was hit by mortar shrapnel. He had to fight through the pain, but he was able to help carry that Marine to safety. During that assault, 18 Marines were killed and another 70 injured. Those who were there that day know that the casualties would have been much worse if it weren't for Lieutenant Murphy's valor and inspiring leadership. Despite being injured repeatedly during the attack and ensuing withdrawal, Lieutenant Murphy declined medical attention, insisting that all others receive care from the medics before him. His injuries were so severe that he was evacuated to a Danish hospital ship, then to the USS Repose, an American hospital ship, before finally making his way stateside where he received medical care at a naval hospital in California. He was discharged from active duty on April 7, 1953, but remained in the Marine Corps Reserve. For his actions on February 23, 1953, he was awarded the Medal of Honor, and on October 27 of that year, President Dwight D. Eisenhower personally bestowed the medal upon Lieutenant Raymond Murphy. The following year, he was promoted to captain and remained in the reserves until his retirement in 1959. In the following years, he worked at the New Mexico Veterans Administration and would become its director before retiring in 1996, but he continued to volunteer at a VA hospital until 2005. Captain Raymond Murphy passed away on April 6, 2007 at the VA nursing home in Pueblo, Colorado at the age of 77, and he is buried at the Santa Fe National Cemetery. He was survived by his wife, Marianne, sons John, Tim, and Michael, as well as his daughter, Eleanor. Perhaps the most inspiring part of Captain Murphy's story is not just his actions during the Korean War, but also his life after the conflict. He continued to serve his country and his community, exemplifying the concept of service above self in every aspect of his life. His career in the Veterans Administration allowed him to continue serving his fellow veterans, ensuring they receive the care and respect they deserved. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duty and Valor. If you enjoyed the podcast, we ask that you follow us and leave a review or five-star rating, which will help new listeners find the show. Links to the sources for today's show can be found in the show notes as well as at dutyandvalor.com. And please join us next week where we'll tell you the story of another true American hero.